Clark and Pryor hold his man at bay here and keep it at long range. Use the center of the ring. Jab away with the long left hand. When he scores, he scores well with it. But every so often, a stronger opponent, McQuillan, gets inside it with a shorter punch. And once again, Pryor boxing well. Holds his man at bay with the long left hand. But is it enough? This last round. Quite a good contest. In this final. Again, he walks it with a short right hand. Well, he's taking his best punches and he's still on his feet. But he's in a little bit of bother now in this last round, Jim Pryor. But he'll still fight back against the hard punching of Willem Zendrada. Bleeding about the nose now. And this is some punch up in this last round. Well, we thought that if McCullin would get to him, that he might stop him, but it looks as if Pryor is well able for those punches. He's taken them well, and he still has a fair bit of fight left with him. And certainly he's not going to give up easy, and it's going to be a hard struggle for the champion, Martin McCullin, to hold on to that title. A bit of holding, signs of tiredness. One, two, three, good punches there from Pryor. Good, clean punches. This is quite a curtain riser. And again, he makes the pun miss in this last round. And he's all hot in this last round. Coming from way behind, he's picking his man off with those long punches. And this has been a remarkable recovery by Jim Pryor. Looked as if he was almost out of the contest for a while. And here he is, back in with a chance. But well, it's missing with most of those blows there. And the cold straight punches of Jim Pryor have done well throughout the contest. Now there it is, it's all over. The winner of that contest by 29 points to 9. And the Maxwell National Senior Champion at Flyweight. And the holder of the Nash Fishman Perpetual Challenge Cup. In the red corner of McCullough. Yes, once again he's champion. By a wide margin, but it was a hard, tough battle for him all the way through. Yes, good opening contest there to the bill. And the first decision of the night, McDowling going to McQuillan. Yes, Michael, it wasn't surprising really, you know, it was uh, prior was going to have it all to do. It was a very, very tough assignment for him. McQuillan, you could see there, is a much more mature man, 23 years old, prior full, not fully developed. You could see that as well if you're studying close enough there. Yeah. He, he's quite light, you know, he's, he's only about 20 years old. But his day will come. It was a good, brave performance, but McQuillan just had too much power and had too much determination. Okay, we'll make in the second fight in the bill, the World Championship bronze, me bronze medalist Damien Kelly of Holy Trinity was fancied to retain his title against uh, Donald Hosford from Cork, and uh, indeed he did. Well, he did, yeah. This was a real uphill battle for young Hosford. Hosford boxed very, very well, so don't, don't think that he was sure. totally overrun. The scoring was a bit wide, but Hosford did box well, but he just simply didn't have the power to upset Damien Kelly. Kelly's a very skillful fighter. You need power, you need to be able to catch him as he comes in. Hosford couldn't do that. Mm -hmm. Right then, well now we're going to move on to the Bantamweight contest. Now this was an old Belfast affair between Tommy Waite of Carn Lodge and Danny McAree from Immaculata. We join it at the start of the second round. And off we go for second round. Round two. Second round of a fairly interesting contest this. In the corner there of Danny McAree. In blue, a little bit of trouble there. Water spilled at the corner. McAree. Getting everything tidied up, and off we go. Now, it's Danny McAree in blue here. The instructions from his corner to jab, jab, jab throughout. He's doing reasonably well with the left hand jab. That's a good punch. Now, wait. 
may be wise to it by now and get inside it get underneath and there he comes in with good punches but McAlee is quick to reply and this is certainly developing into quite a contest this one in spurt they let go with good solid punches and the pace slows down again but these are two good punchers Wade doesn't pay an awful lot of attention to the fence. Randall leaves himself wide open, particularly to the left foot. This time, steals a point and moves away. Bit negative there in that exchange, but that's not, that's a bit better, that long right hand. This is an all ultra final for the national title. Two boxers, neither of whom were successful in the ultra championships, but one of them is going to be national champion. And it's difficult enough to separate them, wait perhaps in front, but not by many. Some smart boxing every so often from Danny Macquarie. But he's forgetting what he was told from his corner now. He's told to jab, jab with the left hand. Not to be drawn into mixing it too much, although he's quite useful in so. He's got a good short right hand. Now this is a punishing contest, this one. Looks well to the left hand, then is pushed right back by McAree. <laughs> and again, in close, the master is Tommy Waite, in close. They are good short punches and a good right hand counter punch from Danny McAree. Tommy Wade coming up for the last round. With plenty of work to do, there's not an awful lot between them here. It's a hard, rugged, tough contest. Well, this is Tommy Wade from the Cairn Lodge. And Danny McAree, this promising young boxer from Ultra Production. Third and last round. Now this developed into quite a punch up this contest here. In red is Tommy Wade from the Cairn Lodge, in Belfast and Danny McElree from the McElroy Club. The national title at Bantamweight. Tommy Wade. Tough. Good short puncher. Likes to loosen up like that, but he's been answered every so often from McElroy. McElroy is good at long range and can hold his own reasonably well in close. But he could be making mistakes because weight is a tough one. Tommy Waite works in a vegetable stall in the Shank Hill, right across from where that terrible tragedy was some time ago. And he was just away for his lunch just down the, the road when everything happened. So he's lucky to be here. That's young Tommy Waite in the Cairn Lodge in Belfast. Well, for Bantamweights, they punch hard. They're a little bit on the slow side, perhaps. But they like to punch and stand like middleweights with big, heavy punches. And there's a good left hook from McAree. Well, McAree is mixing it with Tommy Waite, and he's forced Tommy Waite to give a bit of ground there. And again, he loops in a good right hand.
Well, now his weight puts himself out in this last round. Macquarie has taken Wade's best punches, and we know that Wade is a good puncher. He's won a lot of bouts inside the distance. He's a hard hitter, but Macquarie has taken the best of them, and he's still full of fight, and he's carrying the fight in this last round. And this has been a good last round for Danny Macquarie. He drives his man before him again, tries to pin him down at that corner. White inclined to drop the hands on this last round. Looks tired, looks weary. And there again, he calls on his old tricks, jabbing on a short right hand and scoring well at the bell at the end of a very entertaining round of boxing, that last round in particular. It was a hard fought contest all the way through, punishing, and who's going to be the new bantamweight champion? The winner of that contest, 22 points to 16, and the Max Orr National Senior Champion at Bantamweight, and the holder of the Duggan Arnold Challenge Cup, and the red corner of Waite. Yes, Tommy Waite's the winner, runner-up last year, but he goes one better this time, fails in the Ulsters, and here he is, national champion. National champion indeed. At this point, we take a break, and coming up in part two, plenty more action from the National Stadium, including former European champion Paul Griffin. So join us again in a few moments. Welcome back. The former European champion Paul Griffin has been the man to beat in the featherweight division over the past few years. And tonight he was hoping to secure his fourth national title in a row at the expense of Paul Ireland, whom he also beat in last year's final. Here's Noel Andrews again. Well, possibly the most well-known amateur boxer in the country, Paul Griffin. Former European champion, boxing here for his Irish title at featherweight against Paul Ireland. Paul Ireland from Belfast, from St. George's, St. Malachy's Club. And don't think for one moment it's going to be an easy one for Paul Griffin, because when they fought it for the same title last year. Griffin only won by two points, 14 to 12. Well, this could be quite a punch -up. Amazing that we have such talent in this weight division at Featherweight. Griffin, really nice composed southpaw, uses his right hand, hooks well with the right hand and jabs well with the right hand. Battle of the southpaws. Now, Ireland will more than likely have to come forward a lot in this contest to take the title. The set, the pose boxing, Paul Griffin. Nice, clean punch. Beautifully strong. Griffin will be economical with his punches, but get right power into the left hand. Late, he's beginning to punch harder than ever. Negative one, but in close. Amount of smiling. Check there. The referee. Well, he says break. He wants them to break cleanly. Now Griffin is trying to draw his man onto that left hand. There it is. One, two. Good punches. Solid left hand, a right hand. Well, as yet, Ireland hasn't settled into this contest. Griffin has picked him off with some good, solid blows. Tried to draw him on again with that left hand. Slightly off this time. Now this so far is Griffin at his best. Drawing his man onto that right hand cross. Also gets a fair bit of power into his lead punch. Trying to draw his man onto the solid left hand. Normally you'd say a boxer shouldn't be backed into a corner, but it never seems to worry Griffin. He's always able to slip away from it. Now this slower pace will suit Griffin. He's 
setting the pace, picking his punches, and Ireland will have to come forward if he's too upset. Griffin got his chance when he gets into a corner like that. He allows him to slip away, and there's the bell for the end. The first round, fairly comfortable one so far, I think, for Paul Griffin. Good. Don't get caught on the inside, but kept on the inside. Let and this is him drawing him on to <laughs> a good, solid right hand. One, two, three punches. That last one pushes his head right back. That was a good exchange there. Mm -hmm. Then you're, you're getting in pain to think of what he's doing. Second back. Round two. What well, has been a good first round for Paul Griffin. Now, oh, well, Ireland, all Ireland, changes tactics in the second round. He's trying to already. He's got to come forward. Not wait. Trying to catch his man off balance. Well, Griffin has been very well balanced and composed throughout the opening round. Griffin, one of the world's best amateur boxers. Former European champion. Very popular boxer here in the stadium. Defending his title. Once again, he has Paul Ireland. Ireland gave him a hard battle last year, and it was a close enough contest. Griffin looks particularly comfortable in this contest. Griffin's spoiling when they get in close. Doesn't want to do any close water work. Wants to keep it at long range. Suits him at long range. Ireland trying to get in close and punch your way to the body. Certainly Paul Island making a fight of it. Almost every move he makes, Griffin seems to have an answer. He's picking him off every so often as he comes in. But Ireland has no option but to come forward. But most of the time when he comes forward, he's been punished. There's a lot of holding and spoiling in close. Griffin has been checked there by the referee. Ireland still has a fair amount of fight in him. And he's still, he's come here to win the title. He's going to try right up to the final bell. his tracks with a good right hand left hand on the face he'll still come forward Griffin picking him off but Ireland knows that's the only way he can win is to come forward all the time it's a punishing approach but it's the only way and most of the time he's been severely punished by Paul Griffin when he comes forward but he's no other option He runs onto a right hand. And the crowd enjoying this good display of boxing by Paul Griffin. This will at the moment seems made for him the way he's coming in, leaving his chin unguided. At the end of the second round, and that's a clear cut round, I should think, for Paul Griffin. This is a great exhibition of boxing so far by Paul Griffin. Good, clean punch. Catches his man and fades away and makes Ireland miss. Third and final round. Well, it's the last round for the national title at featherweight. Ireland's most successful amateur boxer, Paul Griffin. And Paul Ireland and he's a brave man, this man from Belfast, Paul Ireland, because he's in against real world class here. And Griffin at his best, boxing remarkably well, cool, picking his man off at long range, almost two out. As Ireland comes forward, he's picking him off. But Ireland is putting on a brave display and is chasing Griffin right throughout the contest, but unable to get him at a good barrage of blows. Certainly, he deserves great credit for trying because he's been trying right from the word go. And here once again, 
be prepared to launch the attack in this Battle of the Southpaws for the featherweight title. And it's exhibition stuff here from Griffin. The crowd here in the National Stadium enjoying the way he's been controlling this contest. The credit must go to Ireland, who's never ceased. Keep trying. That's the second time he's been checked for holding. Griffin certainly inclined to spoil when the leap close. And Ireland is all the time punching particularly to the body. Boxing getting a little bit ragged in this last round. That's a good cracking left hand to the chin there from Ireland. One of his best punches looked a good one. But late in the contest now. But he's certainly not giving up. Griffin stepping up the pace of it now. And wipes away the blood there, takes a look to see that there's no serious injury. Ryan looking over his, his corner there as if to say, what can I do? Well, he can't do an awful lot more than he's been doing. But he is against one of the best. And again, he makes the mistake of coming forward. Or is it a mistake? It's the only option he's got. Griffin countering almost throughout. And punching away for all his worth. It's Paul Ireland. He's trying to keep his punches up. That reason to think they were a little bit low. And to keep his head up. And there's the end. The end of the third and final round. Crowd enjoy that. We await the result, but surely it must be another win for Paul Griffin, but a very brave display by Paul Ireland. The winner of that contest, 15 points to seven, and the Maxwell National Senior Champion at Featherweight, and the holder of the Jewelry and Metal Manufacturing Company of Ireland Perpetual Cup, and the red corner of Griffin. Yes, champion once again, Paul Griffin. Yes, yeah, good win for Paul Griffin. Well, McDowling, obviously, you saw there at close quarters. And Mick, you had a closer look at this contest than most of the others because you were in the corner, of course, with Griffin. Yeah. Yes, I can afford to smile now, Michael, but I can, I can assure you there was a lot of pressure because the pressure was on Griffin. He had to perform well. If you remember last year, he wanted to fight Paul Ireland after the Olympic Games and what happened there. All that stuff, he, yeah. yeah. He wanted to prove that he not only could he box, but he could fight. Okay, he outfought him last year, but tonight he'd done different. He, he outboxed him tonight. Mm -hmm. He's back to he's boxing the way he should be boxing and, and the way Southpaws should fight, even though he was boxing a, a Southpaw there tonight. But very, very skillful. Yeah, Griffin, of course, as you just mentioned, two years ago, uh, 18 months ago, in fact, or the summer before last, very much in the news, of course, as part of the boxing story uh, from Barcelona. The part of the story that's now, I suppose, forgotten in the light of everything else. Oh, it's, <laughs> it's well forgotten. I mean, that, that's all in the past now. But it, it, it must be remembered that Griffin has lost only one single fight since that, Michael. Mm -hmm. That is a tremendous uh, achievement. He has picked up a European bronze medal in the meantime. Yeah. Yeah. You know, he's, he, he's really a, s a very skillful fighter. I think he's a, he's a cut above the rest. I said that during the Olympics. Olympic Games and even though I coach him now I still say he is a cut above the others. Mm -hmm. Good well we expect to see more in the future then from Paul Griffin but the next fight coming up is the lightweight final involving Dubliner Glenn Stevens and Eddie Bulger from Wexford. Now Stevens has been having the best of the exchanges as we pick it up in round three. Final round. It's close enough there's three minutes to go and there's a lot of support here from Wexford for well, this fella Eddie Bulger Eddie Bulger in blue and Glenn Stevens from the Drimna Club in Dublin. And Bulger, I think, perhaps trailing with a bit of work to do here in this last round if he's to win and be once again an Irish champion. Hasn't held the title for a number of years now. Then close, getting a bit rough there. Stevens has been working off the counterpunch, but there's Bulger carrying the fight and scoring well in this last round.
Bulger is certainly putting on pressure in this last round. Now, can he keep it up? As the slower pace seems to suit Glenn Stevens, he's been able to fade before his opponents and score with good ones. Puts the hands down low now, trying to draw, draw him onto those punches. Bulger comes forward, and Stevens fails to score. This is quite a contest, but unusual and unorthodox in their approaches, and there it's almost like a wrestling match for a while. Stevens loves the big punch, all the time trying to draw his man onto the big punch. Trouble with the headgear. Well, this is a problem that turns up every so often, and off they go. Seems always holds his elbows out wide. In strange kind of style. Well, just short with his punches. Not getting them through, and he runs into a couple of hard ones there. Stevens, no one retreat, punishes Bolger every two off. Quite an exciting last round, and once again, it's the hands down. He told by the referee to keep his hands up. None of this fancy showboating. You never a boxing, you must have your hands up, ready to defend yourself. At all times. Again, he's frustrated by the way his head came in. Now he's getting a little bit ragged in this last round. Oh, what a punchy competition there just at the bell. They really let go with some good, solid blows at the bell. Well, that was quite a finish. Punishing punches there. Bulger comes forward and is really severely hit by Stevens. The winner of that contest, 10 points to six, and the Maxwell National Senior Champion at Lightweight and the holder of the St. Andrews Boxing Club Perpetual Challenge Cup in the red corner is Stevens. Yes, a little bit of a mixed reception there, but he's a clear winner, I think. Ten to six, according to the judges, and well deserved. So the champion at Lightweight is Glenn Stevens from Crumlin. He has a good victory then for uh, Glenn Stevens. Glenn Stevens fancied by many people to have done well in that contest and indeed fancied by many people to do well over the next few years in boxing. So we're taking action then tonight from the national finals at indeed the National Stadium and the South Circular Road here in Dublin. I hope that you're enjoying the action so far. Next we move on to the light welterweight contest between Willie Walsh from Cork and another Corkman, Sean Barrett. So the title had to go south, but to St. Coleman's and Walsh or Rylan and Barrett, well let's see and in red here is Billy Walsh. Billy Walsh in red, very popular here in the stadium. And Sean Barrett, also from Cork. Sean Barrett from the Rylane Club, Cork. Now this is round one. Now these are two hard punchers here. Billy Walsh has built up quite a reputation for winning his contests inside the distance. And he's very popular with the crowd here. Sean Barrett, well, he's an all-round athlete, something of a buzz, Haiti Quill. He's won all sorts of awards. Monster champion, and here he is trying to be Irish champion. But this is the sort of contest that may not go the distance. Because we two really hard hitters here. The edge and experience, perhaps with Billy Walsh in red. But don't write off Sean Barrett, he's a tough one. You've seen him here in intermediate boxing. And he really hits hard. What is intertitle by knocking out his opponent inside the distance? Well, he was. He's been in these championships before and was runner up to Eamon McGee. And this is developing into quite a punch up in this opening round. Great support here. Well, a lot of people have come from Cork. 
And judging by the reception, it sounded to me as if there were more Bennett supporters than Walsh supporters. It's hard to know, though. Referee wants Nina boxing and no holding when they're in close. And Barrett goes for his man with a long left hand and scores with the left hand. Perhaps he'd be wiser to keep this at long range and try and push this fella back. Because in close all the time, Billy Walsh is dangerous. As I say that, they're both dangerous. And he's been for holding, he's been checked and warned. This is quite severe in this opening round. Punching away to the body severely is Billy Walsh. He hooks the body and a brilliant left hand of the chin. And it's a wonder that Barrett didn't go down. He was caught with a looping right hand to the chin, a left hook to the chin. And there's another right for good measure. That looping left hand, crack on the chin, sinks a few into the body. And Barrett's in trouble now in this opening round. And as I say, he hits back with a big left hand. Yes, you can't write either of these fellas off. There's been severe punching. Been scored in this very first round. There's a big right hand home from Billy Walsh. And the crowd really enjoying this first round. Really enjoyable toe-for-toe -toe boxing in this opening round. I'd say they're happy enough about that, Billy Walsh. He was the, the man who was doing most of the hard hitting. Those short punches. And there's his opponent holding for all these. We're trying to spoil, putting his right arm around his opponent. And there's a cracking right. There's the left hand. A cracking left hand on the chin. And that almost put him down. He held on for all he was worth there. And many a boxer would have gone to the canvas for that. Yeah, no, you wear and don't look. Here, I will wear and don't, right? Jab. No, jabbing. Good straight jabs, though. As he's coming to, right? One, two. Good. But keep the guard up, Alton. Keep the guard up. As he's in the corner, walking him close in. Second jab. Watch it. Billy Walsh from St. Coleman's Club and Court. Round two. Round two. His opponent, Shawnee Barrett from Rylane in Court. And the crowd thoroughly enjoying this contest. Sean Barrett. Johnny Barrett in blue. He's been an All Ireland Colleges champion, cross country running, 5,000 meters, and an Irish champion in boxing. And here he is against Billy Walsh in red. Billy Walsh putting everything he has into this contest. Runner up last year to Aidan McGee. And it looks if he may go one better this time. Really, there's a comeback from Barrett. Barrett loops back with a good left hand to the chin. Well, this is a remarkable contest. Just as you think one fellow's getting on top, the other comes back. In the opening round, I thought for a while that Walsh was going to win inside the distance, but he's after running into a couple of hard ones here from Barrett. Barrett's the sort of fellow that just won't give up. He took Walsh's best punches in the opening round. And here he is, still with fight. Referee calling for quiet in the corner. Barrett putting all his hopes in landing that big left hand. He seems to get an awful lot of power into a looping left hand. He can punch with either, of course, but the left hand, and there he runs into trouble. He's caught, caught by Billy Walsh. But he'll still come forward. Well, you don't often see such action. In this is the second round. What a contest. Neither going to give any quarter in this bout. And indeed, Cork doing very well in these senior championships. 
four boxers in the final. One of them must lose here. And there's that big left hand again. That dangerous left hand of Barris comes out of the blue, but he's not able to set his man up to catch him for a second time. Tries once more. Are hacking away for all their words, flings him to the campus. He looks weary, he looks tired. Walsh, and there's the bell for the end of the round. And a tired Billy Walsh back to the corner. And what a sensational bout of punishment, this one. There's that left hand and a right one. And once again, that left hand. He gets a lot into that left hand, Sean Barrett. Well, it's quite a punch up this one. Don't let him push you back. If you don't push you back, you're going to lose the fight. One round. You've got to go one round. I think we're ahead. Okay? Come on. Come on. Hang on. Huh? Make sure you come well into this time, all right? Be accurate with your punches. Be straight in with them punches. Stay in with the punches. Don't be trying to be way out. While there's three minutes left, and if it's anything like the last two minutes, there's going to be plenty of action here. Will it go the full three minutes? Because there's been an awful lot of hard punching all the way through here. Billy Walsh and Red in this old court final for the Irish title. This is the light welterweight final. Walsh and Sean Barrett from Riley in court. And how they're going to separate them is difficult to know. Barrett was warned in the first round that that will go against him quite severely on points. But just as you think one fellow is getting on top, the other comes back. For a while it looked as if Billy Walsh was going to win this inside the distance. But how Barrett did it, I don't know, but he came right back and has scored with some good punches every so often, particularly with that left hand. There's a wild-looking left hand, but when it holds in to his opponent's chin, it can do an enormous amount of damage. Inter-county minor footballer, cross-country champion, he's a real all-rounder. This man in blue, Sean Barrett, against Billy Walsh, one of the most popular boxers in the stadium, but most only known for the last year or so. But he certainly draws the crowd. Very popular. Hooks with the left hand. Wow, who got the better of that? It's difficult to know because such clean punches scored very freely. Big right hand. Walsh again, pressures the right hand, sinks, sinks a couple into the body. But instead of cracking, Barrett comes back again with some of his own ammunition. Jumps the body and up to the head. They've almost punched themselves out. Well, they haven't let up for a second all the way through this contest. And the crowd, well, they've enjoyed every moment of it. There's a big right hand. And Walsh beginning to get to him now in this last round. But never right this full of Barrett off. And there once again, he fires back. Well, he seems to use the elbow there on the blind side of the referee. Referee wants it. Careful of the clash of heads. They hardly know what they're doing at this stage. They're out on their feet at the final bell. A big embrace, the best of friends, but oh, what a punishing contest. Well, you don't see much better than that. 
action all the way through. And there again, the big attack, the big punches, and at times difficult to know who gets the better of that exchange. Yes, a great ovation for these two boxers. The winner of that contest made 23 points to 17. And the Maxwell National Senior Champion played welterweight. And the holder of the Prince Ali Khan Perpetual Challenge Cup. And the red corner of yes. yes, a popular winner, a great scrap. And Billy Walsh is the champion by 23 to 17. The position of the loser, please. And a round of applause for a brave loser in Sean Barrett. And no doubt we'll see more of him again. Well, a generous round of applause for both boxers there after a really entertaining and hard-fought contest. Victory on the night going then to Billy Walsh, but uh, as Noel Andrews mentioned in the commentary there, Sean Barrett, very much an all-rounder, good hurler, good athlete as well. So plenty of talent there outside the boxing ring as well as in it. Right then, one of the highlights of the night was destined to be the middleweight title fight between Dennis Galvin and Danny Ryan. Now, Galvin lost his title 12 months ago when he was KO'd in the second round for one of the upsets of the finals. Well, tonight he was back, determined on revenge. Well, a packed national stadium here, thoroughly enjoying this contest. The final round at middleweight, Dennis Galvin trying to win back his title, the title he lost to Danny Ryan. And here's Danny Ryan, a reigning champion in red, and Dennis Galvin formerly from Moat, and now boxing for the St. Saviour's Club here in Dublin. Danny Ryan, of course, is from Rathbone County, Donegal. The great sensation of the championship last year. But he knocked out or stopped Galvin inside the distance. But Galvin holding his own well in this contest. Beginning to find his range of punches together quite well in the second round. Might be a shade ahead. There's not an awful lot between them now in this last round. Now this battle can be won or lost in this final round. The both be gives you a bit of holding every so often. Out for Dennis Galvin. He's caught. He's caught with a good one there from Ryan. Slipped inside. That's where he beat him last year. Stepped inside. Cut him with a short left and right hand to the post. Well, they're slinging out the punches now. That was quite an exchange. Trying to get set for another onslaught like that and Ryan finds his range with a good left hand Galvin trying to push him away Ryan steals the point then jumps inside Galvin now looking for the big punch Quick to retaliate. Well, on the edge of their seats here. Good right hand from Ryan. He hurts Galvin. Galvin ran onto that short right hand. Again, a bit of scrambling. Putting it all in here in this last round. Galvin, hands up high. Reasonably good defense. It can never be 100%. And there's the bell. It's all over. An entertaining contest all the way through. Certainly a very hard one. Now, will Galvin get back his title or not? It's hard to know.
The winner of that contest by nine points to eight. And the Maxwell National Senior Champion at Middleweight and the holder of the Major General W.R.E. Murphy Perpetual Challenge Cup in the blue corner. Yes, he wins back the title. He's champion once again. A delighted boxer, Dennis Galvin. A very close contest all the way through. Perhaps he won it in that second round. He really put some great work together in the second round. But he comes out on top. And once again, he's champion of Ireland. Disappointment for Danny Ryan, but no doubt we'll see him again. And there's the happiest man in the stadium right now. And no wonder, champion once again, Dennis Galvin. <laughs> Happy man, quite obviously, yes. Good win there for Dennis Galvin. And showing just a little bit of athleticism on top of all that as well, Mick. You can do a lot of things, Dennis, <laughs> yeah. Uh, you, the marker was set down for this fight, Michael, about... I suppose eight, eight, nine days previous to the championships yeah. here because uh, Danny Ryan boxed in the Ulster Championships and was taken to a points decision by Richard Doris. But Galvin done away with Doris inside yeah. well around and a bit. Yeah. And he looked very, very good, very impressive. And he's been sparring very well. He's over in St. Saviour's gym with John McCormick and being very well looked after sure. there now. And he showed it tonight. He was really sharp. I thought that that would be the result. But Danny Ryan is young. He'll be good. back. Mix, just looking briefly then at the other contest tonight that we mm -hmm. haven't seen at welterweight. Uh, Neil Goff took the title there against Neil St. Clair. Uh, Jim Webb at light middleweight, uh, he took the title against Arthur McFadden. And in the light heavyweight division, Gordon Joyce from Sunnyside, he got the decision there against uh, Adrian Sheeran. And uh, Joyce had been out of the ring for something like two years, last won a title in 88. Yeah, it seems as though Gordon's been around a long, long time. He's been, I think, in seven finals yeah. or so. Now He's now got, I think, it's four titles he's got. But uh, he, I thought he would prove too strong for young Sheeran. Mm -hmm. Piling pressure on, he works mm -hmm. very well to the body and it's a big long jab and would be just too experienced for young Sheeran and mm -hmm. obviously that's the way it turned out. And in the last fight of the night then at heavyweight, Paul Douglas of uh, Holy Family as expected there. I think uh, it's fair to say Mick against Pat Doran getting the decision. Yeah, well Douglas much more experienced. What can you say about him? I mean he's just powerful. He's put on weight. He's got a bit of a belly now mm -hmm. but he makes good use of it. Yeah. He has lots of power and he piles forward looking for big punches and I thought he would be too strong for young Doran. Yeah. All right Mick, thank you very much indeed. Well, that's where we must leave it then. I hope that you've enjoyed our boxing coverage from the mm. National Stadium tonight. And we leave you with the promise of more to come tomorrow afternoon on Sports Stadium when we'll be featuring some of those other contests from tonight's finals. In the meantime, from McDowling and from myself, good night to you. <laughs>
getting crazy and leading off. Coming up for the second round of this contest here. Here's the challenger for it, Neil Sinclair, a very promising young boxer who has won a bronze medal in the World Juniors, and there's the champion. Neil Goff. Neil Goff from Waterford. So it's Waterford Belfast here. Neil Sinclair, Glenn Gormley. Member of the Holy Family Boxing Club in Belfast. And the opening round, fairly tame. Sinclair has been more or less dictating the style of contest here. Uses the ring quite well. Goff hasn't been able to upset this cool style of fun. Goff the champion. And the more experienced of the two. Old Sinclair has a lot of experience himself. Well, always only 19. Boxed in underage. International boxing. Quite a number of occasions. Including that bronze medal he won in Montreal a couple of years ago. That was for the World Junior. Goff himself has been through the underage. The intermediate champion, All-Ireland champion and youth. Boxing a few times. And of course, I've seen him boxing. He was voted uh, champion of the year two years ago when he won an Irish title in the seniors. Now, Goff finding it difficult to take control of this contest. He's got to really come on his thinking cap, do something, get him close to this, but that's more likely to get him in a short foot. Sinclair has been setting a nice cool pace here and staying out of trouble. And this is where Goff has got to score. He's got to score when he's in close like that. And keep up pressure. When he gets a move like that, he's got to keep moving forward. Stay in close. At long range, Sinclair looks the more comfortable. But he's got to score the points too, and there's a scoring one. Wants to wipe his face there, there's some blood about his nose, or yes, it's nothing serious. Remember he takes a closer look, and off we go. That's a good solid left hand to the face, flush in the face. That was a good solid one there from Sinclair. And this one I think they are showing his boxing skills and showing them well in the second round. The end of that second round, and I think he should be comparatively happy. He needs to step up the pace a little bit more with one round to go. Now listen, now's the, now's the time to show him the game here, right? Back to basics, faint come through with the job, all right? Faint come through with the job. Check the breathing. Now listen, Neil, you're hitting him with the left hand, you're throwing the right hand too high. Right, right? Now that's a mistake. Well, there we see the kind of thing that's scoring the points for this fellow. His left hand is the best punch he's got, Neil Sinclair, and he's scoring well with the left hand, scoring the points against the champion. All the time, pressure from... Neil Goff coming forward and again he runs right on to a left but it's his only way to hold on to his title is to get close Seven's more work to do here the champion Neil Goff third and final round At Neil Goff, last year's champion, up against one of the most promising amateurs in Ireland right now, Neil Sinclair from Belfast. Boxing coolly, calmly, never flustered. And Goff has been finding it difficult to get beyond the long reach of Sinclair. And in this last round, he 
still has a chance of holding up to his title. There can't be too much between them. And there's a good looping left and right hand there from Goff. Goff scores well early on in this last round. Goff is a great one for winning the last round, for coming from behind. He's done it before on many an occasion. He's not going to give up easily. This has been quite a good, interesting contest all the way through. And a cracking right hand from Sinclair. Yes, we're seeing some good boxing in this bout. These are two good boxers. And there's no doubt about it, we'll have a good international representative at welterweight. As either of these fellows would hold alone with anyone. And this is it going to be the youngster taking over the title. Neil Sinclair scoring freely with a couple of good punches there. Yes, that could upset his breathing. Doesn't seem to be worrying him too much. Indicates he's all right. And in this final run, took a while to warm up, but when it did, this has developed into quite an interesting and quite a good, entertaining contest. Good boxing, each trying to outwit the other. Stop at times. A little frustrated that he can't get beyond this youngster's long punches. Oh, with a cracking right hand from Goff. That was one of his best punches, a really good right hand. And quick for his alley eight was Neil Sinclair. That was a lovely move from Neil Goff. Now, can he do that again? That's what he's been trying to do, but he's got to do it more often, tries again slightly off this time. And Goff staying the pace, staying the pace very well. At the bell, to the end. Looks if he's a little disappointed he didn't go on for another half minute or so because he's been beginning to put his punches together very well. They will see a good move from Goff catching his man completely off balance. Yes, a cracking right hand. Tried with the left. The winner of that contest by 12 points to 11. And the Maxwell National Senior Champion at Welterweight and the holder of the Welterweight Challenge Trophy in the red corner of Goff. Well, Goff, that last thing did it for him. One point. By one point, he holds on to his title, 12 to 11. He came back. But it seemed it was slipping away from him. He comes back and holds onto his title. A Can bit of a surprise you, and a disappointment for Sinclair, but a very entertaining contest. Well, this is the champion, the champion Jim Webb at light middleweight, defending his title. Third and final round. And off we go for the last round. Jim Webb. The Holy Trinity Club. <laughs> Anthony McFadden. Anthony McFadden, a tall student from Dunfanaghy in County Donegal. He's been working hard all the time to try and land a big heavy punch. So there he scored with a couple of good ones there at the start of this last round. But Webb has always had that little bit more accurate, that little bit more busy than his opponent. So there's still not too much in it. But anyone's fight in this last round. <laughs> Six in a good shot of left hand of the body from Jim Webb. And scored well. One good solid left hand of the body. He's been making, uh, forcing McFadden to do most of the running in this contest. He's been answering it fairly well. Forcing McFadden to make the mistakes. 
There's a clean shopping left hand from McBatten. McBatten now, is he coming alive in this last round, beginning to find his record? Right. Yeah. McBatten is not going to give up easily. Strong. Comes, he's got the big punch. Flings out the left hand, almost falls over. He loses balance. Referee caught him for quiet. And again, Mike Fadden will not stop. Keep coming forward. And Webb beginning to get into a rhythm now, making his opponent miss and then countering. The contest may not have been the most exciting, but it's a grueling hard battle all the way through. Two hard punchers. They certainly know in the morning they have for it something of a punch up there because they've been hard punches. There's a good clean one again from Mike Fadden. Now the zip gone from his punches now. Mike Fadden still flinging out the heavy ones, but I don't think they've got quite the same power as they had earlier on. Webb. Same pattern, drawing his man, and trying to counter, outreached, but still at the bell. Still a fair amount to fight left to Jim Webb at the bell. Always gives away, seems to give away reach. He's quite a short, uh, light middleweight, but he's a tough, hard one, and he punches well. And there's Anthony McFadden from Dunfanaby. The winner of that contest by 18 points to 11, and the red corner of Yes, well deserved. He's champion once again, Jim Webb from the Holy Trinity Club in Belfast. Second round. And these are the big punchers, these fellas. And late heavyweight, George Joyce. Cornered and trained by his brother and former Irish champion, Kieran Joyce, Gordon himself, a champion of six years ago. And this newcomer to top class boxing, Adrian Sheeran from Swinford, with quite an amount of support here in the crowd. And holding his own reasonably well. But in the opening round, it was Joyce punching away to the body. Will he continue that? I feel he will. I give it to him in this contest earlier on in this championship. The referee wanting quiet in the corner. And Sheeran standing his ground here and trading punches. He's a tough one. He had a tough battle with Dan Curran last weekend. He was caught with a few good punches from Curran, but he was able to come back and win and win well. Quite a good operator, this fellow, and he catches Joyce as Joyce comes forward. Joyce, formerly a light middleweight, has come up about a stone and a half in the last couple of years. And he walks into a good, solid barrage of blows. He's caught with a hard left hook to the chin there. Offering no defense. And they were good punches from Adrian Sheeran. Well, as the bout goes on, this fellow was standing up to it fairly well. Sheeran, he took a lot of punches to the body in the opening round. He's still standing his ground, and he's beginning to find his range with some good punch shots to the head. Punches again with the left hand to the head. But it's Joyce forcing his way through to the body. Sherman sure doesn't like those body folks blows. Nobody would, I suppose. Joyce knows it. And that's why he's aiming so many punches at the body. Trying to suck the energy from the younger man, Sheeran. The referee caught him for quiet in the corner again. Oh, that's a good right hook to the chin. That was a good looping right hand from Joyce to Shin's chin. 
But really it felt that one. And again, a good right to the chin again from Joyce. He came out of that round well. This one has started the round well. And he still has quite an amount of fight Stop there. laying on with him. Push him off and stop holding. Push him off and hit him again like you've done there a few times. He's tired now. He's flicked out. Oh, come on. Big tud round now. Get your breath back. Out of them legs. Get your breath back. Come on. Well, that was him running into one, two, three good shots there from Adrian Shearer. He's tired. Box him. Don't be lying on. Don't be lying on. That's going away now. When Second he comes in, roll him like that. Step back and give it to him. Come on. It's well, it's the last round, the last chance. Kieran Joyce sends out Brother Gordon for the final round. Will the Joyces win a title back again? They haven't had a title in the family for a while. And Adrian Sheeran wants to bring the title over to Swinford and Mayo. That's a good left hook there for Sheeran. Packs a good wallop in the left hook, but Joyce seems to walk through them. Again, a toe from his corner, not to be holding. Keep fighting back, Sheeran, but he is inclined to do a bit of holding when he's in close. The more experienced Joyce is the one who does the work when they're in close. Joyce throwing the punches again to the body. Sheeran waiting for him. And Sheeran again scores with a left and right to the face. Joyce has moved up a weight. He's been out of boxing for quite a while, but he's certainly fit. And the referee is ordering Kieran Joyce away from the ringside. There's Kieran, the former Irish champion himself. He's put on a bit of weight, too. Now, he's training the Sunnyside Boxing Club in court. Joyce pushes forward, lands with one big right hand. Taking an awful lot of punches in this contest. Right from the word go. I thought that Sheeran might have cracked if Gordon Joyce got to him early. Well, he got to him all right, but Sheeran has fought back and he's held his own. And he's proved that he certainly is a fairly useful light heavyweight. In this, his first taste of the Irish Senior Championship. And he's against a very experienced boxer in Gordon Joyce. And he's held his own all the way through. And again, Sharon scores well, but quick. Quick as a wink, Gordon Joyce is back to the fly. Back with a few good solid punches there at the bell. The fight left to Neil Boy right at the end. But still quite an amount left. But there it's all over. No time. And smiles all round and cheers all round. Great contest. The winner of that contest by 14 points to nine. In the red corner of Joyce. Yes. Jordan Joyce is the champion. He had to fight hard all the way through, but he's the champion. And there's the man who was almost put out of the stadium for instructing him during the course of the bout. A delighted brother, Kieran Jock. So it's a great triumph for Cork, and particularly for the Sunny Sunnyside Boxing Club. And there's Dad, Brian Joyce. Des Heard saying bye bye to amateur boxing refereeing tonight. Second out. Third and final round. Well, wonder will Mike Tyson help him here in this last round, Paul Douglas. 
defending his heavyweight title. <laughs> Paddy Doran from Fibsborough has done well so far. He's been scoring quite well with a long left hand every so often. And he's taken some of Douglas' best punches and he's still staying there. Oh. Those in balance there as Douglas pushed him across the ring. Doran again trying to fall away with the left hand. Want to stay away from that corner there. Douglas, if he launches another of those big attacks, could nail him. Douglas turn to jab with the left hand. Made to slow down somewhat now. Uh, Dolan losing his speed because he needs the speed. Stay out of trouble. Steel points against Douglas, but Douglas stalking him now continuously. Comes right in there and scores with a good big right hand. Referee has a closer look to see if he's all right. There's no count. He seems all right. But this time, no, he's gone. This could be the end. Catches his head on the ropes. He looks dazed. Doesn't look too good. Doesn't look too good from here. Indicates he wants to continue. The referee says, box on. And I think the end is in sight. Bleeding from the nose. And that's the end. Almost one at inside the distance. He eventually caught up on Doran. And it looks as if he's going to be champion again. Now this is it. Crack. And it was a cracking punch. And he certainly didn't fall very well either. The winner of that contest, 14 points to 9. And the red corner, Douglas. Yes, Douglas the winner. And once again... He's champion. And the there's really what put the cap on it all together. A cracking right hand. Smack on the chin. And Paddy Dorland in trouble.